Okay, there we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Two Comic Book Dudes. Uh, it's been a while since our last interview or video. Uh, we've had a little, a lot of things going on, but uh, tonight we have a, a special guest with us, Mr. Pat Shand. And uh, Pat is a very prolific comic book writer, uh, has done a lot of work for Zenoscope and and uh, a lot of different books, Robin Hood and, and those kinds of things. Um, I'm Aaron, Editor-in-Chief of Comic Booked. Hey everybody, Justin, Managing Editor of Comic Book. Okay, and Pat, tonight we're talking to you about uh, Destiny New York, your new Kickstarter project, which looks great. You want to tell us about the premise for that? Yeah, sure. Um, we have a uh, long version and a short version. The uh, shorter version, super short, is that it's a story about two magical ladies in love. Um, the longer version, uh, that's still not too long, is um, it is about um, how a former magical girl, a girl who had a big destiny for her, you know, she had a prophecy made about her, how after she completes said prophecy as a teenager, how, how she finds herself as an adult, you know, because um, all those classic fantasy stories, um, I mean, the one that comes to mind always, I always say this, is uh, Harry Potter. But, I mean, it's all through fantasy, you know. It's it's in Buffy. It's in almost any show that has genre elements that focuses on a prophecy. Once the prophecy is complete for the character, the story ends. But I thought it would be cool to explore what happens next. Because um, I found a parallel between the child stars of our world versus the prophecy kids in, in the realm of fantasy. Whereas you see these kids who, who are, they, they grow up doing these incredible things that people usually spend their entire career trying to achieve. And then once they hit adulthood and they've already done all that, they've pretty much done the most amazing thing they're ever going to do. So some of them burn out. And um, I thought that it would be cool to have a magical twist on that while also having a very grounded world. Um, so yeah, the, that's the premise. And the world, uh, it's much like our world. Uh, because I didn't want to build an entire mythology. I didn't want to build this intense, magical, alternate world. The idea is basically that it is our world, but magic is real and it's accepted. It's not special anymore. So it's it's as mundane and common as eating and sleeping. So in, in every issue, you're, you're not going to see these gigantic wand duels. You're not going to see spells, all this magic stuff, because it's like... In an episode of, say, um, say Supernatural, you, you're, you're not going to see characters sleeping to know that they sleep. You know, it's it's accepted. Right. So in Destiny New York, <laughs> my idea is that instead of focusing on, on the magic, show more of the characters and more of the actual world um, as if magic wasn't this incredible thing. Because, I mean, if it did exist, it wouldn't be in everything that we do. It would be an aspect of our life. Sure. I like the child star, you know, concept because you're going to have some characters in there that ended up like uh, Screech from Saved by the Bell, you know. Oh God! Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, ones that that peaked early and then just petered out completely, or ones that maybe peaked early but still kind of held on to some of that child stardom as they went on, and maybe some that that went through their whole thing and then still became something, made something of themselves after the fact, right? Exactly. You know. It, it, it's very interesting because um, we are obsessed with the Hollywood redemption story. We want to see stars rise and fall and rise again. Um, so, I mean, it's a very abusive cycle. So uh, the, the idea of that magnified by, as a 13-year-old, you'll save the world. That's a lot bigger than as a 13-year-old or 7-year-old or whatever, you'll star in the sixth sense. That's oh, <laughs> right. bigger. So, so the idea of... How, how that person becomes an adult, how that person lives with themselves and finds purpose in, in a more mundane day job. You know, that that is the core of Destiny New York. Interesting. Okay. They don't all end up like Robert Downey Jr., right? You know, up and down and up and down and back up again. So that's cool. Um, so uh, looking over the, the rewards for the Kickstarter, there, there's a lot of cool stuff. And really, you're getting in for five bucks just to, to get your name in the book, which is, is awesome. I always like that part. Um, and it's really, I think, the, the, the minimum to get like a hard copy of the book is only 25 So that's right. great. Pretty cool. Right. And um, what we wanted to do, too, with that is um, we wanted all the extra tiers to be affordable, too, um, because we, we knew that to, to afford... Um, printing 
not only the book itself, but to, to afford hiring these artists to do the Kickstarter exclusive prints. We have um, three different mm. artists doing those that we would have to um, have those tiers be pretty expensive. So we wanted the tiers that, uh, that are included in, in every uh, tier, like the uh, lower rewards, to be so affordable and so worth the money that people won't bat an eye at, say, paying $50 to get that print. Because with that print, too, you get five prints from Monroe. You get the graphic novel. So um, because Monroe is just, he is he, he's the artist and co-creator. He is the most prolific artist I've ever met. Um, he's done so many covers that haven't even made it into this Kickstarter uh, because the idea was originally to pitch it as, a, as an, an ongoing comic series. But when we moved to Kickstarter, we decided to do it as a single uh, graphic novel, and that would be the way to get the most story out at once. Um, but Manuel had already done, pretty much for fun, uh, about 15 or more covers. Gosh. So, um, yeah, so... When yeah. it overachiever, to, uh, yeah, that, right. So <laughs> we, we had this backlog of content that we that, that we pretty much could just use for whatever we want. And I saw that as a cool opportunity to give a great deal of prints for a really low price. So um, very nice for just a few dollars more than than, than, the, than the actual book. You can get five prints from him that would have otherwise been covers of their pretty great art pieces. That's pretty cool. Yeah, these are some great so, rewards. Oh yeah, yeah. So Justin, you you've looked over to talk about what you think about it, and then and any questions you've got for Pat. I mean, uh, you know, the the preview I was able to look at looks great. Um, you know, definitely a very interesting story, and the avenue you're going with it of, you know, that all the magical stuff is over here. And we're going to focus on what are these people like really like do in their day-to-day lives and how that kind of interacts so i really enjoyed you know like i said the preview that i was able to see from it i was going to say um i think in the kickstarter video it said you've kind of been working on this for about two years so where did like the actual inspiration for this story come from um it's hard to trace because i um I, i came to it to create a new outlet for me to pretty much pour all of myself into um because I've probably spoken to you guys before about how Robin Hood was that for me for a while. Um, and mm-hmm. what, when it became clear that, um, that Robin Hood wasn't the best avenue to, to continue doing that because uh, that's not a creator on book. I'm, I'm going to get notes. And eventually I even left <laughs> that title. Um, so it, it became clear to me uh, early in the process of writing the Robin Hood ongoing series that I needed a book that was pretty much just mine and um, j- just mine and the artists. So I could collaborate with whoever ended up drawing it to create something that we could funnel everything of ourselves into that we didn't have to worry about. Oh, um, can't do this part. So put this in because I mean, that's the reality of work for hire, you know, in that, um, Mm -hmm. you can try to, um, if you get a note from an an editor that you don't don't agree with, you can try to debate, you can try to work (laughs) it out. But it, it doesn't always happen, you know, and it isn't always the smartest thing to try to do so. Uh, so um, we wanted a book that we wouldn't have to have those bridges we die on. We wanted a book that was just ours. And um, that, that, that was pretty much my, um, my base. Like, I knew that I needed one of those in my life. And um, the rest, I, I, bi- I built around... Um, Pretty much how I was feeling at the time, what I was going through, um, I felt uh, the pains of growing into an adult, um, like really becoming an adult. Because, you know, you are an adult when you're 18 years old, but as you grow, you look back and you see that even the person that you thought, like every 18-year-old thinks they know everything, they think that they're done growing. I I mean, like, (laughs) it's it's crazy to, to look back at that person I was and just see someone I don't even recognize whatsoever. So um, the, the idea of that, um, I pretty much just took that and built magical elements around it. You know, it, it never came to me as a fully formed plot. I was never like, all right, we take, um, uh, because yeah, someone asked me if I was inspired by the magicians. Um, and like, if I just like took that idea, mixed it with this and like, no, I mean, that's, it was never one of those. And that's not to discount the um, people who pitch something as this meets that, because I do that all the time. But this was more yeah. of me trying to find an, an outlet, you know, an outlet for stories that I couldn't tell elsewhere. 
Well, and it's and it's important. I mean, I think everything that that we do and you do, it, we draw from our experiences, and our experiences are really everything that goes into us. So, the Magicians right. is a great show, and you know that's obviously a, an influence out there. Harry Potter, like you said, you know all these different things throughout history that we, uh, that are part of our culture, part of our pop culture, that all feed into, and we kind of blend that stuff up, and then we pour out our own mix, you know. So this is it's really a cool a cool concept. I really like it. Plus it plays on a lot of ideas and things that are floating out there and things that people are dealing with, you know, personally as well. So it's it's good. Yeah. Okay. I definitely wanted it to feel like um like the the characters were real people, you know, cuz um the 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 whole point of the book is that you, you shouldn't be going through it looking for the magic. So um I'm glad to hear that it does reflect what people are actually going through. Because that was very much mm-hmm. the intention that the characters wouldn't feel like they're in a fantasy world; that they would just feel real. You know? Yeah. Well, I think you know that's one of the draws of, of what we talked about Harry Potter. You know, a lot of people felt like Harry Potter when you know he's first they're living under the stairs and abused by that family and and everything that goes along with that, and then all of a sudden this this breakout to be this person that is so highly respected and regarded. Whereas in this case, you have kind of the opposite you have she's highly regarded and respected up to the point where okay we're done with you now and, and go about your life and now it's like how do you step into a normal role and be a normal person when you have all of that behind you so it's it's really a i mean it's important for everybody i think you think about the way life goes and, and kids are kind of like that your parents focus mm-hmm. on you while you're at home and they they tend to raise you up and and support you and then all of a sudden you're 18 years old and you go off to do your own thing and it's like uh, help me, you know. So, yeah, it's yeah, interesting. And, and, yeah, it, it, it's like life, you know. Like we're constantly being replaced by the, the next generation, and that's really that's why. I guess like I, I found, I found myself asking why every generation hates the new generation slang, their music. <laughs> like, I, I saw so many people that I know, like smart, smart, good people, posting on like taking their time to angrily post on Facebook. I hate when people say YOLO, and it's like, and it's like I wanted to examine that, and the idea is that when we see proof that we're no longer young, it just means that we're closer to death, you know. So, so I yeah. really want to explore that in this, you know. So, so yeah. So sometimes those things are just dumb. <laughs> yeah, but, no. but like, we were just as dumb, though, you know, like. Yeah. I was just as dumb. Definitely say that. Yeah. No, I, I know. I grew up in the '90s, so you know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, two weeks left on this Kickstarter. Uh, Destiny New York, great thing. We're going to put a link in the in the body or in the uh, description for this video, and we'll have an article up on comicbook.com. Definitely check that out, viewers out there. Um, of course, you know, watch our video, like, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Um, Justin, do you have anything else? Yeah, I was wondering. So. Our character here, our, our main character, with uh, her birthmark, does that have anything to do with her prophecy, or is that, like, not a birthmark underneath her eye? Uh, it is a birthmark, and it does have something to do with the prophecy. It's, um, I mean, all right, so the the format of the book, you saw in uh, the preview that we have yep. three different art styles. We, we have the, the flashback painted style that that Mama mm-hmm. does. We have the, the main style. And we sometimes break um, Logan's thoughts down into a cartoon representation of what her inner thoughts would be, right? Uh, so right. we're continuing that motif through. So we'll see uh, parts of Logan's history through those flashbacks. So we will definitely get um, more of an origin story, I guess, too. Because um, what I've been kind of hinting at is that the first chapter that I gave isn't the first section of the book. It's the first chapter, mm. sure. It, it, it's chapter one, but there's a prologue, and the prologue is done entirely in the flashback style. It's um, about, I, I think it's six pages, if I remember correctly, and it's uh, set wow. right before Logan um, makes her prophecy come true. So um, mm. we set that up, cut away right as something's about to happen, and then as the graphic novel goes along, we reveal more about what actually did happen and how that relates to her life and her relationships. That's oh, cool. Wow. Okay. That's very cool. All right. Great. I'm really, really excited about this. I mean, like, like you said, you're almost halfway there with like 
13, 14 days to go. Like, this is definitely a project to go ahead and jump behind now. And, yeah. you know, if you get just a few dollars, you get, like, such an awesome re- return as a reward. So. Right. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, a lot of times, I mean, we do a lot of these Kickstarters and, you know, we get behind them because they're great. The art is great. The story's great. The, you know, everything is great about it. And we try to get the word out there and sometimes it just doesn't catch on. But it's nice to see that you, you're already halfway there, which is great. Um, and, mm-hmm. you know, two weeks left, 14 days left is, is a long time still. So, uh, right. you know, we hope that viewers out there, you'll jump on and, and help out. And if you're not able to help out, share it with somebody else, you know, post it on Facebook, tweet it yeah. out there, whatever. Get Just yeah. get the word out. And so that's what we're going to do. You got to think like so many times, um, you know, with a new book that's doing a Kickstarter, you're only getting one issue. You're getting behind it for one issue. This one, you're getting behind it. You're getting a whole graphic novel, you know, right. you're getting like six books right there. So definitely something to jump onto, and it looks amazing. Like, uh, you know, if you go ahead and go there, download the preview, take a look at it, it looks great. Um, I don't know. I can't say anything else other than just go ahead and <laughs> help everybody out. You know? For sure. Yeah, thank you. So, Pat, and, no. No, yes, uh, sorry. Uh, I do, I do want okay. to say that even if – read the preview. If you think I'm the worst writer in the world, you still can't do that not well. <laughs> Marwell is great, you know, so no matter what you think about me, I mean, I think you like the book, you know, it means a lot to me. However, you can't deny Marwell, you know, look at that art. Yeah. So I would definitely encourage yeah. you to check that out, at least for the art. He's carrying you in this one. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really an excellent, excellent book so far. So I'm looking forward to seeing the whole thing when it's ready. So, um, all right. Well, Pat Shand, thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. Um, we will have some more information about Destiny New York. We'll get that out here and in an article on the website. Um, please, like I said, like, share, subscribe. Check out comicbook.com for more great comic book stuff. Um, and check out this Kickstarter and definitely uh, support it. Okay. Well, thanks for joining us. Um, and, you know, we hope you have a great week and go read more comics. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.